The snap tight assembly system locks end channels to wall sheets without the need for tools or fasteners. To assemble each panel, the perimeter channels are secured to the top and bottom of each sheet. Gently tap the channel over the snap tight lugs and work your way along the sheet. Each channel should be fit to the center of each sheet. Simply tap the channel along until it's aligned. We're going to join our splice channels now. Basically, we're just joining a pair of channels together to make a longer one. There are three parts, a left channel, a right channel, and the joiner. Looking at the part numbers, you'll see that the left channel has the letter L and the right channel has the letter R at the end of the part number. There are also printed arrows pointing to the end of the channel that needs to be joined. The joiner, called a CSJ, needs to be put in the right way to match the channel. Make sure that you've got the long sides matched up. Place the CSJ centered on the end and press in as shown until you hear it click. Repeat this with the other side and then make sure that both halves are butted up against one another. Do this for the rest of the splice channels in the pack before beginning construction. Let's do the rear panel assembly. To construct the rear panel we'll need 154B channel, 181D channel, two 262 sheets and one 263 sheet. Start by laying out your sheet so that the 262 sheets are on either side of the 263 sheet. Make sure the side of the 262 sheets which has the holes on top of the rib overlaps with the matching holes in the 263 sheet. Overlap the sheets by one rib. Fasten the sheets using 6 of the 10mm self tapping screws. Take the 54B channel and attach it to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. Ensure that the short side of the channel goes to the outside of the panel. Take the 81D channel and attach it to the bottom of the sheets. Use two 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the CSJ and channel together. Repeat this for the top channel, securing the CSJ and channel with two 10mm self-tapping screws. That completes our rear panel assembly. Let's do the left side panel assembly. We'll need 161D channel, 181E channel, 1260R sheet, and 1261R sheet. To start, orientate your sheets so that the pre-punched holes in the edge are aligned and overlapping. Once these holes are aligned, use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the sheets together. Next, get the 61D channel and attach it to the top of your sheets using the snap type method. Make sure the short side of the channel is facing the outside. Repeat the process for the bottom using the 81E channel.
This will complete our left side panel. Let's do the right side panel assembly. We'll need 161D channel, 181E channel, 1260L sheet, and the 261L sheet. To start, orientate your sheets so that the pre-punched holes in the edge are aligned and overlapping. Once these holes are aligned, use three of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the sheets together. Next, get the 61D channel and attach it to the top of your sheets using the snap type method. Make sure the short side of the channel is facing the outside. Repeat the process for the bottom using the 81E channel. That completes our right side panel. Let's do the roof panel assembly. To construct the roof panel, we're going to need two of the 81C channels, two 88J lips, and three 43S sheets. Align your three sheets so that the holes on the long edge are lined up with the other sheets. Overlap the sheets by one rib, making sure that the holes are aligned. Use four of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the sheets together. Use four of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the sheets together. We're going to attach one of our 81C channels to the top of our joint sheets using the snap type method. Don't forget to keep the short edge of the channel facing towards the outside of the sheets. Get the other 81C channel and repeat the process for the other edge of the sheets. We'll attach our lips now. Get one of the 88J lips and this will overhang the end of our panel. Place the lip over the top of the channels and align with the pre-punched holes. Fasten the lip to the sheet using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the remaining lip, aligning it over the channels at the end of the sheet. Fasten using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use a 3mm drill bit to drill out the holes in the top of the CSJ. Secure the top of the CSJ using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the underside of the CSJ. Do the same for the other channel. Drilling out and fastening with four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. This will complete our roof panel assembly. Time to start the front panel assembly. 
To construct the front panel, we'll need 189A jam, 189B jam, 190B jam, 154A channel, 154C channel, 179B channel, and two 32A sheets. Place the two 32A sheets so their narrow pans are in the centre of the panel. Leave a gap the width of a sheet between them. This will become the doorway. Attach the 54A channel to the top of the sheets using the snap type method. The short side of the channel will face the outside of the shed. Make sure the corner hole in the sheet aligns with the outer centre hole in the channel. Repeat this process for the other sheet. Make sure the corner hole of the sheet aligns with the outer centre hole in the channel. Attach the 54C channel to the bottom of the sheets. The holes in the sheet and the channel will need to align the same as they did at the top. Take the 89A jam and slide it between the top and bottom channels. Once slotted in, make sure that it overlaps the sheet and the holes are aligned. Use four of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the jam to the channels and the sheet. Secure the ends first and then do the centre holes. Take the 89B jam and repeat the process for the other side, sliding it between the channels and the sheet. Once slotted in, make sure that it overlaps the sheet and the holes are aligned. Use four of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the jam to the channels and the sheet. Secure the ends first and then do the center holes. Place the 90B jam at the top of the doorway. The notches in the 90B jam will slide over the 89A and 89B jams. Make sure the holes are aligned and the jam is placed correctly. Then use two of the 10mm self-tapping screws to fasten the jam to the channel. Using the 3mm drill bit, drill out the two holes in the centre of the channel. Fasten the channel to the CSJ using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now at the bottom of the doorway, place the 79B channel into the 54C channel. Make sure the short side of the 79B channel is sitting to the outside and that the holes align. Fasten the channels together using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use the 3mm drill bit to clear out the centre hole in the 79B channel and then fasten using one of the 10mm self-tapping screws. It's time to flip the sheet over. We recommend you get a friend to help you with this. We'll secure the jam at the top by screwing two of the 10mm self-tapping screws into the corners. Take the 3mm drill bit and drill out the centre holes in the channel. Secure the channel using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the bottom of the doorway using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Use the 3mm drill bit to drill out the centre holes in the channel. Fasten the channel using two of the 10mm self-tapping screws. That will complete our front panel assembly. We'll construct our door panel next. 
To construct the door panel, we'll need one pad bolt, one door plate, 158A channel, 158B channel, 258C channels, 291A jams, and the B sheet. Start by orientating your sheet. We have ours orientated so the holes for the lock are on the left side of the screen. Take one of the 58C channels and attach it to the top of the panel using the snap type method. Repeat this process for the other 58C channel, attaching it to the bottom of the sheet. Next, take the 58A channel, it's the one with the hinges. Attach it to the right side of the panel. For this channel, we'll need the long side of the channel facing outside. Slide it underneath the 58C channels at the top and bottom. You'll know you've got the channel in the right position if the hinges fold upwards. Repeat this for the 58B channel. Remember to put the long side of the channel facing towards the outside. Now that the channels are on, secure the corners using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now that that's done, do the remaining holes in the channel using six more screws. Make sure they align with the holes in the sheet underneath it. Flip the panel over and use four more screws to secure the back of the channels. While our panel is turned over, we'll attach the door bracing. Take one of the 91A jams and align its holes with a diagonal row of holes in the sheet. Both ends of the jam will slide underneath the channels. Once aligned, use a screw at either end of the jam. Do this from the underside of the sheet. This will hold our jam in place so we can flip the sheet over and more easily do the rest of the screws. Repeat this process for the other jam, ensuring it's aligned with the diagonal row of punched holes. Now that the jams are held in place, flip the panel over again and use six screws to finish securing the jams to the sheet. Next, we'll need the door plate. Place it over the holes on the left side of the sheet. Once aligned, fasten using two screws into the holes furthest from the edge. Get the pad bolt and place on the door plate. Align the four holes and then fasten with four 10mm self-tapping screws. With our door panel complete, it's time to attach it to the front panel. Place the front panel so you have access to the holes or for the hinges. Use the 3mm drill bit to clear the sheeting that sits behind these holes. Place the door panel over the front panel in the open position and unfold the hinges. Make sure that these align with the holes in the front panel. Once aligned, use a pop riveter to fasten the door hinges to the front panel. You'll need to use six pop rivets to secure the door.
Test your door opens and closes smoothly. We've now finished our door panel and attached it to the front panel. Time for the final assembly. Stand up the rear panel or get a friend to help hold it. We'll start by attaching the left side panel. Slide the top and bottom channels of the left side panel into the notches of the rear panel. Once the pre-punched holes align in the sheeting, fasten using 5 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the right side panel, making sure that the holes are aligned. Once the pre-punched holes align in the sheeting, fasten using 5 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Now we'll attach the front panel. Align the front panel with the left panel. Slot the channels together, making sure that the holes line up in the sheets. Once aligned, fasten the two panels together using four of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat the process for the right side, aligning the panels then fastening with 4 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Make sure your shed is all squared up and all the panels are secured. Place the roof panel over the shed. The lips for the roof will need to hang over the sides of the walls. Once the roof is placed, use 4 of the 10mm self-tapping screws to secure the corners of the roof to the walls. Work along the top and fasten the roof and rear panel using 4 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Repeat this process to attach the roof to the front panel, securing with 4 of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Secure the lip to the side wall using 4 of the 10mm self-tapping screws.
Repeat this process for the other lip, securing with four more of the 10mm self-tapping screws. Next we'll attach the pad bolt hasp. Place the hasp over the pad bolt shaft. Use a 3mm drill bit to drill out the top hole of the hasp. Secure the top hole using a 10mm self-tapping screw. Repeat the process for the bottom hole, drill out and secure with a 10mm self-tapping screw. Firstly position the shed onto the slab, making sure the walls are squared up and it's centered. Take your angle brackets and lay them out in the positions as shown, spacing them equally along each wall. Using these brackets as a template, go around and carefully mark where the holes are on the slab and on the wall. Drill 3mm pilot holes in the wall centered on these marks. Now switch out to the 10mm drill bit and drill through these pilot holes. Next, take your hammer drill and insert the 10mm masonry drill bit. Drill down through the marks we made earlier. Be sure to go down deep enough for the height of the diner bolt. From the outside of the shed, take the 10mm bolt and poke it inside. You may need a friend to hold it there. Align the angle bracket with the bolt and then tighten the nut by hand. Tighten it further using the shifting spanner. Put the diner bolt through the bracket and into the hole in the slab. Tighten this nut on the diner bolt with a shifting spanner. Now that this has been done at all positions, the structure is anchored. Now the shed is complete. Any leftover holes can be finished off with a screw. 